Hi there, Robin here, and we're going to talk about Indow Audio's new Revora 7 speaker. This is not a regular speaker. This is not a speaker you're going to see just traditionally three-way or two-way setup on it. No, this is unique all on its own. Now, they sent me an email asking me if I want to talk about it, which was odd because it had been just a little while since I actually saw their original prototype speaker, which looked like a soccer ball. And it was basically a whole bunch of neodymium drivers set up in a ball. You can look it up online. I'll have a link to it down below. Since then, they've come out with this guy. So the idea of having these speakers is really important. It's to give you the ability of full sound everywhere. So it doesn't matter if you're on the left side of the room or the right side of the room, the front of the room, the back of the room, if you're stuck right in between the two speakers, it's just going to be rich, full of sounds. Like putting on a high end set of headphones, it doesn't matter what you do with them, you're wearing them, they're on your head. Same principle, except these aren't on your head, of course. I know a lot of people do sound engineering tests and do all these type of things with these high end speakers. And it's not my cup of tea, because to be honest, it's an experience. I don't want a computer to tell me what's good or bad. A computer will tell me what I have a problem with and what I can expect when I see something, but it doesn't tell me what's good. This isn't a studio monitor. This is a speaker you're going to take home. And when you take something home or have it delivered to your house, you're going to want to experience that firsthand because it doesn't matter what it sounded like in the showroom or in the studio or at the trade show. It doesn't matter because one, if they're doing their job, they're going to show it to you what the option of having being just flat and then EQ'd or adjusted to what you like, but it's still not your house. So ultimately you want to try a set of these at home. That brings me to the next step. What you can do with these folks. These folks will give you a 30 day trial period. I'll show you how that works. You'll find the link for that down below, but this is important. The experience of the sound is what it's all about. And if you're not experiencing it at home, then you're just basically getting half the experience. Maybe you're getting sound separation, or you might run into like what happened to me. Now, this is important. Because they sent me the speakers, I unboxed them. I've had them here now for two, three weeks. And my intention was always to talk about them and to do a video about the speakers and how they work and what's really important about them and why you may or may not want to get a pair and bring them home. I mean, that's what we do. But at first I didn't like them. I couldn't care less. My wife thought they were okay. They were very heavy in the mid range, like way overwhelming in the mid range. And that's because of those nine neodymium drivers. Now, again, I'm not an engineer, but I have a concept of what was going on because these speakers all have to work together and they're all trying to equally throw sound around the entire back area, top, bottom, left, right, that sort of thing. They were generating a lot of energy. Even though the volume was low, they were generating a lot of energy and filling the room with a lot of sound. Problem was that was all mid-range sound because that's what they do. And that's where the majority of the music and the vocals are. It's in the mid-range. And the tweeter felt very underwhelming. Like I know they were saying it was going to be very tight. Like the sound separation is very, very tight. Like 15 degrees off center is all you get, right? So I thought, okay, that's going to be tight. But I couldn't even find it. I will also add that after 30 plus years of, well, listening to music, I no longer have an octave range past 14 and a half. So the extreme highs, so anything above 14 and a half kilohertz doesn't work for me. I really have to get a maximum use out of what I do have when it comes to highs. So after tweaking with it for a while, I couldn't, I could not get it going the way I wanted to. I had a really, I have a good digital amplifier that it runs off of a D-class power amp. Very, very good, very clean. So the quality of sound was phenomenal. Like nothing happening wrong there. The uh, mid bass was doing a really good job. Unfortunately, like I said, mid range was overwhelming, but I did get the impression of what they were talking about. I, you can move around and you can certainly tell that the full sound was there. It was just amazing. Uh, but I had no highs and I really didn't feel like I was having a good control at my low end. So I got my equalizer out, which is a two channel 31 band EQ for each channel, which is and of course you can do this on your computer. If you play your music through your computer or through whatever program you have, you can do this digitally. I just happen to be lucky enough to have hardware that does that. And it's nice to look at, you know, the hardware in motion. So, you know, actually seeing what you're doing, physically manipulating it, that sort of thing. Again, you can do this all digitally. It's all available to you. Um, and I started playing with that. Found what I was missing, brought that up, took away what was way overwhelming, brought that down, made it my own made it into something I wanted to listen to. And amazingly enough, I've had a set of speakers. I have some studio monitors from 20 some odd years ago, made by JBL. They were made in Northridge, California. So made in the USA 
fraction of the price of these. And I absolutely love them. And I've had them for like ever since then, since they came out. And it's, I, I've been like, that's always been my, that's what I like, fixation. I've had lots of speakers, but that's what I go for. So I needed to say, well, can I make this like that? And it turned out I can make this better. So yes, at first I had a lot of struggles with the highs, but I fix all of that. So now that's all been put to rest, right? So I originally made a spread of 25 dBs between the mids and the highs. After that, we did adjust it down so that it's only about 17 and a half to 20 now. So we reduced the spread a little bit there. I wanted my bass to be more predominant and I want it to be more noticeable, even though it's a mid bass driver with a passive radiator on the backside and it is seven inches. So you have to respect all of that, right? So you got a mid bass driver here, you got a passive radiator in the back. Taking that all into consideration, you were getting very good bass response out of the back, regardless. And uh, you were getting nice full range bass out of the front, out of the mid range bass. Worked out really well. So basically a 20 dB increase in the low end is what we did. So there we go. So from the actual mid range to the actual low end, I adjusted it by at least 20 dBs. So the range I just gave you for the highs and the lows would be a ridiculous amount of drop in the mid range. Normally it'd be, it would just be sharp and lows. So that would be it. You'd just have sharp highs and thumpy bases and that would be it, nothing else. But with this speaker, that's not the case. So because you have those nine mid-range drivers, you're creating an enormous amount of separation in sound. The left and right can be heard anywhere in the room. You can be standing literally, and it has happened by the way. And I thought I was bringing up the speaker that was closest to me because I heard it right away and it felt like it was right there beside me. And it turned out it wasn't, it was a speaker on the other side of the, uh, the back counter. And I was like, wow, that's impressive. That's how well the sound carries from left to right. And it does because you can literally be standing right in front of the actual right speaker and you will hear the left speaker. And it's not like one speaker overwhelms the other because the actual drivers are, are facing 90 degrees from where you are. They're pushing out sideways. The speaker is never going to overwhelm you. You're not going to get this pounding effect right in your face, right against your ears. That's the trick. But that's also the reason why I had to do such a gain difference, a dB difference between the highs, mid range and low. I had to bring down the mids so this way I can hear more of the low and highs. And once I got that to where I wanted it to, then I really started to like speaker. Then I started playing different music. Then I really moved forward on how I can experience this incredibly well because it wasn't hard. Once I got to that point, I completely, I was worried this was going to be a negative video. Like, oh, I don't like the speaker. It's not good. It sucks, blah, blah, blah. And I hate doing those because there's, I mean, somebody had to figure this out. Somebody thought this was a good idea. And I got to be honest, this is like a Lamborghini in the sense that you got to learn how to use it first before you can really enjoy the actual product so i mean once you you get this you need to do some tweaking you don't just buy it take it out of the box plug it in and oh my gosh it's just awesome unfortunately the experience wasn't like that i actually had them here for almost a week i listened to them a couple of times still wasn't happy about it but i didn't really do much about it then afterwards i got serious about playing around with them and seeing if i can make it better and after doing that taking that time to enjoy the speakers and try and make them better it took me no time at all. Really, once I got an idea of what I want to do, it took me no time to get from a, a state where I wasn't really enjoying the product to a state where I was really impressed and really enjoying the product and I didn't have to go back and tweak it anymore. And that's the important part. You get a set of speakers like this, you want to set it up once or have somebody there with you setting, helping you set it up, set it and leave it. You want to turn an amp on, that's it. So let's talk a bit about the box because we do know now at this point that it sounds awesome. So if you're looking for a high quality, high performance speaker, sounds like nothing else you're going to see, then you're probably going to be looking at a speaker like this. It's next generation. Is it so far fetched from what's been out there in the past? There have been companies like Bose who have tried having, you know, they had the 901 series where they had a multiple driver system. Did the 901, it came or you had to buy the processor to make it sound properly. I personally thought that was very important to be part of the package. But with this, like I said, I, I personally need to EQ that and that's a good thing. Now that I know it, I could hear it, I could feel it. And Dow Audio might not think you need to EQ it, but I think everybody needs to make things personal, make, needs to make it the way they want because we all have slightly different opinions on how we like things. Cosmetically though, I think we can all agree, it looks awesome. It has a great visual look to it. It stands out without being gaudy. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you don't want to have something that's too blingy, too blingy, too blingy, or too flashy. I mean, that would just be like, here you have something that shows what's going on. And it does it really well without, 
you know, making it neon green kind of thing, right? So we've got that amazing nine drivers around the backside. We've got the whole horn setup going out the front. We've got the beautiful cover on the front of it. And we've got this amazing finished block of wood. Now, remember, this is veneered. This isn't solid. This is veneered. But you cannot find a seam on this at all. It looks like a solid block of wood that they just bored everything out of. But that's amazing how nice the quality is on this actual box. The cover itself is magnetic. It just locks in the place. Self-centers, by the way. So it's perfect every time you put it on. So when we're looking at this, you've got this amazing seven inch driver in the front of it with an amazing amount of throw power to it. And the base reflection on the backside is incredible. So we spin it around here, show you the backside, the same drivers on the backside as a radiant driver. So basically there's no magnet, no power actually going to this. It gets all of its energy from the driver in the front. So no ports, nothing to worry about. This way you're not gonna get that low fluttery loose sound to it. This allows you to have perfect reproduction of sound. This does a great job. And if you look at it on a spectrum, it just sounds great and it looks good too. But for me, it's acoustics. How did it sound? And it sounds really solid. It generates all the bass I want out of this driver all by itself. Now we get back to the top. You're looking at a 3D printed system. That entire top is 3D printed. The nine drivers are recessed in in their individual little pockets going all the way around. So when you look at it, it's individually recessed into the pockets. So all of this has been assembled. So it's a solid, perfect flow from front to back. When you look at it from the front, you don't see nine drivers. You just see the front of the horn. As you bring it around, you see how the tapering flattens out to capture all the actual speakers. And then you get to the back and it rounds off again and becomes flat. Very, very nice. That's what it's all about. That's what somebody taking the time to figuring out exactly how this needs to look and how it needs to be designed to generate that sound. So again, a lot of people are gonna have a lot of opinions on these speakers, good and bad. The most important thing is your opinion. What I've learned is that my initial opinion wasn't that great, but I didn't let that stop me from trying them out and seeing what I can do with them. And then after trying them, doing what I would normally do to them anyways, which is put eventually an equalizer on. I mean, anybody who listens to a speaker and says, that's no good, man. It's like factory setting sucks, man. And I don't want it and you can keep it or I want my money back. I mean, if you're not willing to make something your own, then don't assume that just what the manufacturer did is going to be perfect. I mean, this isn't like buying Coke or Pepsi. I mean, it's not like you take it out of the can. That's what it is. That's all it is. This has the ability to be refined, be made the way you want it to be made. You have the power. And at any point in time, if you want to learn more about this speaker, the links are going to be down below. All the details are going to be down below for you. And again, this isn't paid. They didn't come out here and say, Robin, here's X dollars. We want you to do this. No, they just basically sent us an email. We had a call on the phone. We talked about what the products can and can't do. Figured out that they'd like me to do a video on it. I was happy to say, yeah, no problem. Send me the products. We'll fit it in. We'll get a job done on it. We'll see what we can do. I have no obligation to them for what type of actual outcome there is. 